Everyone, welcome to another episode of Independent Artists Unite, the last episode of the song series of 2023. It's come full circle. There can be only one. Jimmy from Tokyo Teens. Bless you, my brother. Thank you. I've missed you so much. <laughs> uh, it's been a minute since I've been here. Yeah. You were the very first guest on Independent Artists Unite song series. Yeah, thank you for that. That was so cool, man. It seems like it was uh, five years ago. <laughs> well, you've been hibernating. You've been hibernating a bit, right? Yeah, I've um, yeah, I've kind of been uh, isolated down here, just really working on music and, uh, you know, just uh, trying to push everything forward. So I've kind of dropped out to some degree. Uh, you know, as far as my social media presence, yeah, relative to what it was before, but that, oh. that doesn't mean that I haven't been busy doing things for sure. Yeah. Well, you have to do that sometimes too. Sometimes you have oh, yeah. to like get small and be like, oh. yeah. and um, right. And I just want to say too, you know, I spiked my hair extra high today, thinking I was, you know, going to get somewhat close to you, and then you just went full pedal to the metal spike just today blew it out of the water but that that is a thing of beauty that hair uh thank you that i worked on it for two hours so hopefully it won't <laughs> go flat i don't know there's not enough hairspray uh sometimes but uh yes i perfected the method if it's a, if it's a humid day in georgia <laughs> yeah oh god i can't stand it when it's raining uh that's my my biggest enemy is the rain it just uh mm -hmm. Real humid weather, I can't stand it. When my hair goes flat, it ruins my day. This is a sad thing, but true. <laughs> my deepest, darkest secrets here on Independent Artists Unite to get all the dirt. Now, <clears throat> this song, it's interesting to me because I was thinking, as I was listening to this song that we're talking about today, The Crying Tree, The Great Return, yeah. The Great Return of Tokyo. Yes. Tokyo. I feel that that it's kind of uh, this uh, smaller, intimate thing. You know, it's like you can kind of feel that in the music that you've been isolating and getting artistic. It's like it's like this more intimate vibe going on, kind of uh, open hearted, uh, mm. kind of uh, it's got an intimate feel to it, this song, um, you know, which just starts with these synth chords that i just love that has such a great vibe that carries through the song uh i really love this song by the way which is out today the crying tree when this when this episode airs so uh yep. go buy it on Bandcamp and mm -hmm. stream it on okay. spotify and let's get this baby moving right on right on right on we want it to be huge an international but smash hit yes. i'm sure it will be if anybody listens well, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. But talk me through the creative process behind uh, this song. Okay. Well, you made a very interesting observation, first of all. And that is, uh, you know, the sound of these last two singles that have come out, the previous one would be The Ghost. And it is a more intimate sound. Uh, and they're more, I mean, the lyrics are a lot more personal and introspective than, uh, than so some of the other stuff that has yet to be heard yet. The material that's going on the album, uh, most of most people have not heard any of that. But that's being produced by Billy Hume, the great one, who uh, also plays in the guitar in the Tokyo Teens band. Mm -hmm. uh, but these last two singles that have been released, "The Ghost" and then this new one today, "The Crying Tree," uh, are self-produced. So um, there's less instrumental going on. They're kind of stripped down and more intimate, like you said. And the lyrical content certainly is a, a lot more personal. And it's just a different sound. It's just a different space that I've been in. And, um, you know, so it does make for a, maybe a, a smaller sound in some way, but, but definitely effective. It's really working. And yeah. I like, I yeah, like going I down it. that path. You know, it's in between, between the first two singles and then the album are these 
little musical pieces that I'm putting together and I'm trying to say something with each and every one. So, uh, yeah. And then in reference to the chords and the keyboard that, that you had mentioned coming into the crying tree, it's, I had been listening to, um, and watching on YouTube, these videos of Paige, Robert Plant and Jimmy Page, when they did a bunch of these Led Zeppelin songs acoustically. Okay. And they had these Eastern Indian musicians. Oh, right. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Remember those? And, yeah. uh, and I was watching those and they're very, a lot of percussion, a lot of Moroccan instruments and these, these, um, these fabulous uh, percussive instruments that are, that, that they featured and I thought man so musically speaking let's try to put together something that kind of sounds like that that's a nod to what they were doing so that that's where maybe the keys come in they're reversed a little bit and so that's where the feel mm. of of the, of the music itself comes from yeah that was the main inspiration actually oh nice okay oh yeah that's yeah. interesting because for I, and I don't know why because but it was Reminding me of like um, Peter Gabriel era Genesis, you know, you know, oh. was like uh, Tony Banks would just lay these <laughs> things on there, you know, and then the very emotive vocal over top, you know. Yeah, I can hear that. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Um, it's a different, it's just, a, it stands out uh you know away from it every all the all my other material it stands on its own and i love it i'd like to do more of this actually i wish yeah. i could get some real live musicians in that are playing fill the room full of all these great percussion players and just let them go yeah 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 oh man i would love to do that <laughs> that'd be so cool but until then maybe you know maybe i'll put together something else kind of on the same track uh wavelength we'll see We'll see, yeah. but I do love it. But and are you gonna are you gonna include these um like the the ghost and uh the crying tree on the album also? Or no, these will not oh, be okay. on the album. These are just okay. simply standalone singles. Wow, okay. Yeah, cool. the album is a concept album, actually. Oh okay. uh, so it'll it will flow something similar to maybe something like The Wall by Pink Floyd. Oh wow. So that's what the I album's mean. gonna be. Yeah, cool. <laughs> maniacally uh just crazy yeah. cra crazy over there but uh yeah so that's what that's going to be and these singles these self-produced singles will just be standalone uh just be standalone singles and yeah what, what 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 was what is this song um about i mean i know that you went have gone through a, a period of mourning for, mm -hmm. for various things over the last year but yeah. uh, is that what's showing up here in 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 this song, or is it? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes, you you nailed it. It's exactly that. It's speaking directly to this past year. Twenty twenty three has been a horrible year, personally for me, and um, uh, so it is speaking directly to some of those events that have happened over the past year. Definitely. Yeah. 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 Direct. Yeah. Direct reference to you know 2023 yeah 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 and um i was uh, gonna ask you to read the lyrics for okay us. can you do that for us because i Let's think do. they're really beautiful lyrics and thank you so much they stand on their own as a as a poem as well thank you thank you uh all right so uh yes this is the crying tree um i can't believe this is happening again Sleeping with a ghost, losing a friend. Listen to the silence in the dead of the night. The weeping willow waits alone. I know a secret place where I hold my face in my hands. Won't you come with me and drift away? Memories of yesterday, spirits begin to rise. The salt in my tears, it burns my eyes. I know a secret place where I hold my face to my hands. Won't you come with me and drift away? Sit with me underneath the crying tree. Sit with me underneath the crying tree. Mm. Beautiful. Yeah. 
Yeah. And um, I also want to talk about your vocal, which I think this is the most beautiful vocal that you've ever done. Thank you, Scott. I wow. Think it, it, it's really amazing. I mean, I love, first of all, the intimacy of it. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and in like this, the, the pre-chorus where you're, go up to the falsetto yeah. Yeah. it was uh I, it, it's such a beautiful note it wasn't the note i expected when i heard oh he's going up to oh no he's going up to there and yeah so that yeah. was really cool i think you know and the way that it flows into then the chorus uh, mm -hmm. uh you know um or goes back to that keyboard um those keyboard chords is just beautiful yeah. That that's a, that's a beautiful moment. There, there's many beautiful moments in 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 this song, um, and then when that moment comes again, of course, you finally go into the chorus, and that's yeah. a great moment too. Uh, and I love, of course, love the harmony on on. Sing with me. Oh, that's a direct yeah, on the crank, yeah. Yeah, that's one of your that's one of your vocal tricks. Yeah, that I've learned a lot from you, man. Like that, and on the ghost as well. Like these little vocal these little vocal things that you do that I can I consider signature moves, vocal moves that you make. But I, I'm on that, man. I'm stealing those. Well, I, They're I, so cool. So that yes, thank you for I love that, that because yeah. that's why that's in there. Yes, absolutely. But then it's um this uh, the whole kind of. Uh, you know, midsection, a bridge, or whatever you want to call it, that's mm. this kind of, uh, you know, build into this synth string orchestra. And yeah. then, and then uh, kind of, you know, falls apart into the, just this one synth line, and then back into the, 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 the those, mm. uh, those synth chords again. I mean, that is a beautiful moment, too. I mean, I, I'm just, you, you must have been like, when you figured that out and heard it back for the first time, you must have been ecstatic. <laughs> <laughs> I was, yes, I knew. Man, that's it. That sounds better than I could have imagined. It's a perfect move. The And I held back on the chorus. The chorus is actually the second half of the song. So, right, you know, you right, know, right. Like, yeah, there's no chorus until the second half and then it just goes out on the chorus repeating. I wanted to hold that back. Yeah, that's very and, fulfilling. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that, that's yeah. something that I stole from you. Actually, I've done that quite. I've done. I did that on Spirits, the last song that that I did. There's no there's no <laughs> chorus until the outro. Yeah, that's right. Yes, yes, it's a great after, trick. Very similar after the breakdown. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a great move to make. No, that's not true. There is a chorus, but there's a there was like a, a call and answer thing, and that didn't come mm -hmm. into to the break. That that that's what I did. Yeah. But there's another yeah. one where I've done that on too, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, I, that I learned yeah. that from you too because you are you're very good about being patient about teasing a little bit. Uh, actually, you know who does that? It, it, who? Great is Fuzzle. Fuzzle. Oh, you know, yeah, yes. They're they're they're. I mean, I I you know I did you see the episode I did with them? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yes. yeah. That that was yeah. and who who and I stole that from you too because I saw them on your Instagram live, but I became such a fan mm -hmm. of those guys because they they oh. are like, I think of you and them as like the pops crafts pop song craftsmen, you know that <laughs> that that I like to listen to and see oh, what are they gonna pull out of their bag of tricks <laughs> for this song? You know? It's always a big surprise. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I love them; they're great. They make great. They know how to really put together a great song. You know, it uh, it comes yeah. down to the song. Yeah. yeah. It always mm -hmm. comes down to you know, composition. Let's let's be smart about it. Let's hold back. Let's mm -hmm. not reveal everything in the front of the song. Let's try to, if we can, keep the intro kind of short. And let's just get into it, you know. And um, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, that's so, the, that. You, the, you know, of course, the, I always mention the great James K. Ultra. Who, who is who is uh, you? The, the second person, the, he he's the uh, number two that saved my career. First was Jimmy, then James came <laughs> and saved my career. We love you, man. We don't want you to just <laughs> fade away into uh, relative obscurity. No, no. But uh, bringing he, you he, back, man. 
yeah, he, he, he does that for me too. He's like, ah, maybe we don't, uh, you know, ah, that's the yeah. same thing. We got to do something different here. And this is the same thing. Okay. We'll do it. It's interesting where we get our inspiration yeah. Yeah. and where we find and how we find people that are unexpected in our lives that make a big impact. They come just out of nowhere. Suddenly they're dropped into your life and it becomes something meaningful. Completely blindsided by that. I love that. It's such a beautiful ride. It really is. And it's amazing because it really comes down, I think, to about being open hearted, you know, of like being positive, yeah. being open hearted, you know, vibrating at a higher frequency mm -hmm. of like love mm -hmm. and sharing and service. And it's OK. You know, we're in this together. And and, yeah. you know, and then these people get drawn to you. That That's how I think of you and James and, of course, Renee also, you know. Oh, yeah from uh, yep. Nocturne and Zine, um, yes, just like agreed. all like beautiful people really that I met through you too, you know, it's like uh, you, you, you were, you were the first one to like put out on the, your, your um, IG uh, live, um, you know, you were just like putting out good energy, man, just like, hey, here we are, we're having fun, we're sitting down, what's talking, what's yep. going on, you know, and uh, it was such a great, uh, vibe i'm always hoping you'll go back and do those again now have you ever, are you thinking about it yeah i want to do that and reconnect i've realized that by not really being on instagram live on a regular basis it's i've uh i i'm missing out i feel like i'm missing out so yeah after the first of the year i want to go back to a weekly thing oh, and nice. just try yeah. to connect everyone and keep that connection going and see who else flows and comes into th this world here that we our our little universe that we have and see who else you know just comes in and the new people that I'll be able to meet like I always say it is the human factor of course it's about meeting people and you know creating a network and we're all working together and we all want the same thing and we can help one another that's hands down the the most important thing about all of this yeah yeah. You know, we're all going to be gone one day. What are we leaving behind? What have we done? You know, have we helped anyone? Have we made an impact? I mean, just the fact that someone else out there thinks that you're important in their lives, mm. that alone is a, is a reason to live your life. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's the that's the big thing about it. For sure. Yeah. And it is it's it's. I mean, it can be a very lonely thing to be a creator. And, oh, yeah. Um, and yeah. also, mm -hmm. I've also been caught in that trap, as we talked about, of like, if I'm looking to out the outside all the time for affirmation and, you know, am I doing well, you know, then I'm, oh, yeah. then I'm lost, you know. I, I mean, the focus has got to be is much better put on relationships like you're saying the human factor we're in this together and you put something out and sometimes it goes sometimes it doesn't you just get back to work again on another one and and um and meanwhile you know try to lift other people up you know which i really like learned from you you know um thank, thank you i was really well, you're doing inspired by you yeah thank you thank man that well, means so you. much to me. i really i mean that 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 means everything to me and just seeing <clears throat> how you've taken this show <clears throat> excuse me and really run with it you've grown so much you know this show and i watch every episode this thing has grown so much and it's a lot of hard work to organize all of this and put it together and you've just man you've just run, you're running with the ball man it's awesome i love it yeah uh, well thanks i mean it it can start to feel like hard work, but also it's, I also noticed, I mean, I also had the crazy thing is that I wanted to do a show with so many people that I was doing it twice a week, you know? And I thought, uh -huh. this is insane, but it was flowing like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then actually for the last few weeks, it hasn't been flowing for twice a week and, you know, things mm -hmm. have fallen through. And then I, I just said to myself, and that's okay too. You know, it's okay to take a break for a week. And then the next week is just one episode or so I'm, yeah. I'm, and that makes it easier to do. Right. Like if you, if, if I say, Oh, it's gotta be two episodes a week. How, where, where, da, 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 then I going crazy, you know, but if I just say, Hey, who knows, 
Let me see what happens. I get messages. Well, can we do it then? Yeah, we can. Oh, oh, it fell through. Blah. You know, then it's okay. You know, and and I, I I do it. You know, I the way that I do it is very easy for me to do. It's it's a little more work than just the IG live and off, but not much. Yeah. You know, I've mm-hmm. gotten so fast at turning it over mm-hmm. that and editing it and putting it together that is not is not a big deal. And I enjoy it. You know, I enjoy yeah. it so much. So it's not it's not. Um, it doesn't seem like work to me. I'm, I'm just, uh, I, I just think of it as like a, a loving thing to do for other artists and hopefully, uh, and, mm-hmm. and, and for myself, because I love meeting people, you know, I love meeting people and having, and you, you know, cause when the first time we did it, when you do an interview like this with someone, you have a connection that lasts, you know, it doesn't go away. You're like that. That's always your brother, you know, <laughs> which is like, so wonder it's not always like us we we had we had a profound connection uh uh right uh, from the right. start i wonder why that is why do we connect like this i don't i don't know it just happens sometimes yeah with certain people it just it's instant instantly uh you know just clicking uh automatically and um and you never know what you know you never know when that's going to happen and it doesn't happen often mm. actually or we'd all be Everybody would be best friends with everyone, you know. Just doesn't happen like that. But um, yeah. but it's important that we don't it put is. too much pressure on ourselves to yeah. uh, try to produce. Because as creatives, you know, it's not up to us. We can't just meet a schedule. I mean, there's no way I could be a Brill building uh, songwriter and just be on staff oh, right. trying yeah. to write hit songs every day. That just doesn't seem like the, a natural creative process so and it's easy for us to compare our careers with other people's careers and we cannot do that mm. uh, yeah. we cannot our career is not anyone else's career we're on our own path and we are on our own timeline so yeah. you know you got to resi- resist the urge to compare and resist th- uh, the urge to put pressure on yourself Mm. to crank out any amount of work it's not it just like you say it just doesn't go like that you're just on a flow and sometimes the flow is fast and sometimes it's not so fast but that's okay it it doesn't matter you just stay on the flow whatever that is i i agree wholeheartedly it's uh yeah yeah it, it can be tricky i mean i'm i'm uh yeah, I was talking about this with James too because he was he he is just like taking a time out right now, you know. But then he just all of a sudden had a new song, you know. It's like it's like oh, I'm taking a break. I'm you know it's it's a, here's a new one, you know. A few days. Yeah, yeah. He, yes. I've done that with him too, where I send him, you know, because what I'm doing now is demoing the songs in GarageBand. And then I sent him the demo and I say, you know, is this something, you know, I'll let him, you know, decide. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, I like it. Da, 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 da. And mm-hmm. then I'm, I'm already thinking, I need to start crazy about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, just let him, let him run <laughs> with it. <laughs> and then sometimes I've sent him things and I think, uh, and he, and he listen to it. And then, something happens and I get one of these and this is what happened with this last song that came out. I said, wait, hold the presses. Something just came out of me. I don't know where the hell it came from. Yeah. <laughs> and then he, and then he goes, dude, where the hell did this come from? <laughs> and then I know, yeah. Well, he does a, he does a great job. He's another genius. Oh, I think, yeah. you know, him being really younger, is. like, you know, he's, uh, He's learned a lot early, so he's got a great future ahead of him. Oh, I really think he, I really think he does too. I, I, I feel so, uh, I feel so privileged to uh, be doing things with him. I've, I've learned so much from him too, just about this world of Spotify and how things have changed. You know, promoting our music from back in the day when we were like doing, uh, you know, live gigs and trying to get people to sign up for our email lists. Oh with yeah, and you know, in the dark. Yeah. oh my god, <laughs> oh, god, we don't have to do that anymore. You're, you're trying, do you remember, like, you're trying to decipher the email or what the fuck oh. it says, and yeah. then you just say, Oh, fuck it, I'll just send it to this. Like, you can't do that with 
<laughs> yeah, that's that's true. Just, you couldn't read the handwriting nowhere. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God! And getting people to walk up and sign something like, or you know, put an email. Yeah, you know, they don't want to do that. Wasted and it's dark. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ancient history, thank God. Oh my God. Yeah. Th- yeah. All of this has made it e- a bit easier. It's still a lot of hard work, and you know, it still takes time. But it's easier to reach many more people this way. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, you know, it's kind of weird. It's more work, but it's easier. I don't even know how to explain that. It's more work, but it's yeah. Well, it's, it's different. It's tough for the. I mean, I don't know how it is. It's tough for my brain. I'm like, okay, you do things yeah. this way now. You know, okay, I'll do this. You know, it's uh, it's interesting. Yeah, I, I spend the first two hours of every day in a coma, <laughs> so. <clears throat> that cuts out two hours immediately. <laughs> I'll, it's all I can do to walk upright and think about anything. Why is that? If something has happened. I'm losing oh. it. Losing it, absolutely. Um, well, are you still doing your 100 sit-ups a day? Uh, but unfortunately, no. I backed <laughs> off of that. I've just I've been too I've been too sad to even be in the workout mode. But I am definitely going to get back on that and get get my sit-ups going again. Uh, yeah, because well, I, I feel so I'll, t- guilty. I'll tell you my secret, man. Because what I realized as as the you know as someone who's you know trying to gradually uh, adjust to the golden years. <laughs> yeah, the golden years <laughs> is to uh, drop the concept of working out for like an hour or two hours or something, and just yeah. do little things throughout the day. You know, do some oh, yeah. push-ups, do some sit-ups, keep moving a little bit, do some squats, because it's like, it also keeps your joints kind of greased, you know, how, how things get a little rusty as we get older, too. And yeah. it, um, so that's what I do. I'm just like gathering reps, doing this and that throughout the day. And that's, uh, that's worked well for me. And then also, of course, cutting just about in half what the amount of food you used to eat. <laughs> well, yeah, if you eat less and move more. <laughs> That's the magic formula. <clears throat> but those, yeah, it's, uh, I've been eating more. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know why my appetite has been, uh, it's been off the charts. So I got to check myself. I mean, I don't know. My off the chart appetite to other people might not it be very not be much. That. It's relative. <laughs> but nonetheless, like I, I'm eating cookies. What am I doing eating cookies at night? Oh, That's well. ridiculous. Well, this time of year is like, you know, where we're, well, we've, we've survived half of it. You know, we've, we've gotten through Christmas, but this is yeah. like, the time, this is like the time of year where it's, it's like socially acceptable to just have plates of cookies out everywhere, you know? Yeah. Oh People my gosh. I mean, over, you visit a friend's house and there's like three plates of cookies throughout the house. You know, you never do yeah. that except for Christmas. Thank God. You know? Yeah. Oh but, man. Uh, that'd be horrible. But then it's like, you know, once you get a taste for that sugary cookie, you know, then when it's as soon as you come out of your coma in the morning, you're like, those Christmas cookies, where are they? <laughs> yes, where are those, where are those uh, uh, foil wrapped chocolate Santa Clauses? <laughs> where are those? Those are pretty good. I know they're around here somewhere. It's like the phenomenon of craving is, has grown, you know, and it just yeah. keeps going. And then the only way to stop it is just go cold turkey. You got, oh, yeah. you got it. Once the new year comes around, you just be like, okay, I'm just fasting yeah. for a, a day or two, getting all the sugar out of my system. <laughs> yeah, just be done with it. <laughs> Throw it away. It's no good. I'm over it now. I did it. I'm over it. I'm moving on. Let's get back to reality here. And in the pounds, you know, and if you just move, you know, the pounds will fall off. They really oh, yeah. will. You they will. Move. They will. Got to move. Yeah. Got to keep moving. Got to keep moving. We're we're not getting any younger, but we're getting better looking. I think I'm looking at the both of us now, and I'm thinking, yeah, you look wow, fantastic. Man. You look fantastic for, for a couple of older guys. Yeah, we're not bad. No, no, we're not bad. It's not. It's not horrible yet. It could <laughs> be. It could be later. Maybe in another twenty years or thirty years, it could. It could be bad. We could could it all fall apart. But for now, yeah. Well. Yeah. Who, who knows? No by shit. then, by then, there's gonna be all. There's gonna be like facelifts at home. You know, you'll be able to do, just take well, the laser I'll, and be like, mm, oh, thanks, that's good. Oh, hopefully, 
hopefully. But uh, so, do you know you're old when people talk about you while you're sitting in the same room with them? <laughs> in the third person. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, that's that, but you, you finally, yeah, you're finally old now. They don't even have to leave the room. <laughs> well, I have my kids oh, at Christmas. I had, uh, you know, they, well, it's a little different because I'm in Denmark, of course, and my kids are speak Danish and, and uh, my partner is speak Danish. She had her sister over and their kids. And so I take breaks, you know, I try to keep up with them. And then I'm like, you know, I'm going to take a nap on the couch and you guys play this game in Danish and you can just cut loose, you know, not worry if I understand and you can just be Danish, you know. And so I'm and then I realized, oh, shit, I've turned into like my dad taking a nap on the couch while the rest. of the Oh, no. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. Yeah, you did. I mean, how, my dad, my dad would just lie down on the carpet on the shag carpet, like 70s style, you know, and yeah. Just fold his hands on his chest and go to sleep. And there's a Christmas party happening all around him, and he's just that was it. Wow. You know, he would have That's two. A he'd have a couple uh, whiskey sours. He made whiskey sours in a blender, mm. so they were like whiskey mm. sour slushies with a cherry. Mm. And mm. he would have two of those, and then that's it. Now, <laughs> in the middle of the room. <laughs> that's a damn good day right there. That's a, He had it figured out. I love that. That's a perfect day. Um, and then you just drift to me. Yeah. And then you're gone. <laughs> Um, well, speaking of keep moving, you keep churning out these gigs, man. You got a full, full schedule of uh, Tokyo uh, Tokyo Teens gigs. I have been you, getting you just some keep gigs. on going, man. Yeah, I've been. It's now that I have a full band, uh, I feel like the gigs will come a little bit easier. Uh, I, I'm noticing that a lot of promoters um, are looking for full bands, and they're kind of moving away mm. from this low artist with a computer set up and a keyboard oh, that kind that of right? yeah. here, here in my region. Um, yeah. And I live in Atlanta. So, it, you know, throughout the Southeast, at least uh, they're looking for more of a band situation and moving right. away from the solo person, which is still pro pro probably okay out on the West coast, LA. Mm -hmm. Now there's probably, it's always okay. been acceptable out there, but here the trend is moving away from that a little bit. So I'm fortunate to have, a band now and that's helping me put some gigs together and uh so there's a big festival coming up next year that that i'm doing called the dark castle fest yeah, I saw that. congrats that looks like a great gig man yeah that's going to be a good one i've want, i've wanted to do that one for a couple of years and now they've expanded that festival to three days oh so awesome yeah all right well you yeah. better have the album done by then man yeah, the album will be done. I'll have the album to promote <laughs> by then. And then I've also hooked up with uh, my friend uh, Kendra and Elliot Rubin, and they do uh, like a drag show, a drag variety oh, show. Oh, yeah, I've seen some drag, yeah. Yeah, so he, and he's got, he makes, uh, he's got a great, uh, great presence mm. uh, on uh, the uh, Spotify and Apple Music, the streaming. He's, he does a great job, and he's a great artist, but anyway, so I'm doing, I'm involved in that variety show. So I perform two show, uh, two songs. Oh, cool. So it's a round robin of performers. Yeah. So yeah. the show moving from one performer to the next. So I've oh, been working awesome. with them yeah. here in the Atlanta area. And so, and those shows sell out in a day. The first wow. show sold out in hours. And uh, wow, so, that's great. Man. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great that's formula. Cool. So uh, a yeah. great show. So I'm doing those once a month as well. Oh, awesome. That's yeah, interesting because there, you know, there was a party back in the um, 90s in New York called Squeezebox. I don't know if I ever told you about that, but that, that my band was kind of came out of that scene. And it was like a queer friendly, you know, gay, bi, straight, any, all, <laughs> anyone that's a freak basically <laughs> could come yeah. and everybody just got dressed up and make full on makeup the guys all having makeup on everyone you could see just like you know it was just full on you know it was it was great yeah. but the cool thing about it is there was uh there was a few different uh drag performers that hosted the, the night 
you know so there was a drag performer that played and they played with the squeeze box band so it was like it wasn't like karaoke but it was it was a drag performer actually singing uh you oh. know cover songs with the with a band and then there nice. was also a live band also later in the night and it was just a built-in crowd you know it was like one of those things where mm -hmm. you know you're going to play to 200 250 people which was always which was so great you know um Yo, man, where, where, you're, where you're promoting it to let people know you'll be there, not to try to get them to go, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> which, is a, yeah. which is a big difference. And, um, and uh, yeah, but it sounds a bit like that kind of vibe, you know? Uh, uh, I, I love that. I love that mashup, mm. you know, of like rock mm. and roll and, and drag queens and, and, and the whole, the whole yeah. thing. Yeah. I love that. I love that. I love that too. I've always actually wanted to put together like a Christmas variety show mm. where you have like uh, you know, stand up comedian do some skits in between, then have a somebody come out and sing and then maybe have a group sing or what, you know, yeah. put together something, you know, holiday themed. Uh and I cool. yeah. I've always wanted to do that. And I I don't know, that seems like so much work to try to pull everybody together. You've got to write the comedy skits. And you got to, I can't even, that's so, so much. Uh, but I don't know. We'll see. I was, uh, a few years ago, I went to this, um, it was the Ethel Merman Disco Christmas Spectacular, a play <laughs> downtown. And I saw that a few years ago. And man, it just blew me away. It was funny. It was great. It was all in drag. And it was just, it was just a wonderful show. And then, uh, <laughs> and then I thought, that's what gave me the idea to do like a, like a Christmas special and put, put that thing on live, you know, uh, throughout Silver the bells, Silver yes. bells. <laughs> Ethel Merman, she did a disco album in 1979, I think. And they were trying to revive her career and the, the album bombed. Oh. Of course it was just, but I love that album. I, I like it's, you know, I'm not ashamed to say it. I love that uh, Ethel Merman disco. And uh, but so it was kind of like based on that. Yeah. Ethel Merman. God rest her soul. She was a great, a great uh, celebrity. Oof, yeah. She never she never needed a microphone. No, I was just going to say that you could see on these variety shows, you could see other people have microphones. Ethel Merman. <laughs> she never needed one. Just belted it out. Belted it out. Imagine being married to her. She needed something done oh, on the she... other end of the house. Like she, she could call you. You could be down the street. <laughs> And she just oh yeah, lightly yeah. called to you, just yeah, said, yeah. just whisper, and it'd be so loud. <laughs> that reminds me, um, uh, Billy Billy Hume taught me this vocal technique uh, that I've been using, and I, I wanted to bring this up to you. And I used oh. it in the gun, and I used it uh, on the crying tree. Mm. It's a vocal technique to where you're almost whispering. Oh yeah, yeah. you're almost bring it to the. I ne had never really considered this, but you're almost whispering into the microphone when you're singing and you're up close. Yeah, like and, close proximity. And yeah, and you're just singing like that. And yeah. it's so much <clears throat> more effective than screaming. Mm. It's like you layer those and stack those. Yeah. Uh, oh, man. And like since since he taught me that, I've been doing that a lot more. And it has really set, it's set everything apart, man. It's just, I love it so much, the idea yeah. of whispering. And then that made me start thinking of, or listening to other artists in a different way. Mm -hmm. And I realized David Bowie did this a lot too. Um, but there are artists that are singing, and Billy Idol even did this in some of his biggest hits. He's not singing out loud. Mm -hmm. He's not pushing all the time. Yeah. He's singing more intimate delivery. And you get yeah. more dynamics that way. And then when you get to the chorus, if you want to, or the other parts where you want a huge, then you can sing out and put it out there, but you don't always have to do that. You just get close and bring it in, mm -hmm. and it's more emotional. And yeah. people listen because people don't listen to screaming. But mm -hmm. if you lower your voice and you speak to them like this, then you're going to bring them in and they listen to you. Mm -hmm. And that, that's one of the little magic touches that, that I learned. And, and I'm doing that now. Well, that's super cool. effective on the crying tree. Yeah, that's that's that intimacy. Yeah, that yeah. That I was feeling there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I hope other people try that. It's great. It's a great technique, man. It's yeah. a game changer. Yeah. It wouldn't do much if you're singing for a hair band, but uh, in the rest of the world, it's very effective. 
but it wouldn't work there. You know, I'm thinking some other things like opera. I don't know if they bring it down in opera. I guess they do. There's, it's very dramatic. It's uh, opera. Okay, I like. Yeah. But do you know I that watched... I worked at the opera for eight years in New York? No, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. I was a, I was a, um, the, uh, the Metropolitan Opera in New York, they have six actors on staff um, that do like the non- singing stage business and stage combat stunts and things like that and i was one of those for eight years wow and, uh, so yeah it was an amazing experience because i was you know standing like next to Pavarotti and you know yeah what did uh, you learn from that Placido Domingo. like eight years is a lot nice little run you had to have picked <clears throat> up some from that um well Boy, yeah, that's, that's a good question. You um, know, to, I think, from yeah, it, it um, hmm, what did I learn from that? Uh -oh, first, of I all, got... the, first of all, the sheer power of those voices. I mean, the, oh. the, the first, the first uh, opera I was in was uh, Turned Up, uh, a Puccini opera. Um, oh yeah, you know, mm -hmm. that's got the famous Pavarotti. <laughs> You know, yeah, and, and wow. I, was in, I was in front of the tenor when he was singing that. I didn't even realize it. It shook my ribs mm. you know, when he the hit when he hit that note. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And wow. so I was like, and then I went. Then it 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 blew my mind so much that I spent eight years uh, um, studying classical singing. So I was I was training to be a um, an operatic tenor. Um, I have a little bit more baritone in my voice than than most tenors that do, though, too, which was a bit of a, a drawback because they have, I don't know how much you know about opera, but there are lyrical tenors that are more um, that higher pitched tenor voice, like in Mozart and things like that. And then there are more the heroic tenors that are do more like um, Wagner, you know, uh, like like Parsifal and, and things like that where they mm -hmm. really sound like a baritone vocal, but they can also go up to the high C and stuff like that. Yeah. So, so that's yep. kind of what I was, which is a tough, it's a tough uh, life. <laughs> yeah. I could hear, I could hear that though. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, but it, I, I think it did really did change the way that I sang and helped me in a, in a variety of ways. So I, I think what it probably, what I learned is how to use my voice in many different ways. Because uh, I, I think because I was a singer, I could imitate what was going on on stage and both the uh, the women and the men. So I think I really developed a falsetto voice at that time, you know, um, um, you know, yeah. um, learning yeah. what, what my falsetto voice could do in terms of like uh, imitating, you know, these star sopranos, you know, of course, it wasn't. It, it wasn't anything like them, but it, it it gave me a facility of doing a lot of different things with my voice. I think so. That, that's yeah. that's probably the main main thing I did. Yeah, using your voice. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You've got a great falsetto and the the vocal moves that you that you make, man. It's a, a, fan, fantastic. I, I can hear the training though. Now that you said that, I can hear, I can hear that you were in that world. Now I'm thinking of you know I'm thinking of your music now and and your vocals and yeah why was that not obvious to me I don't know but it's yeah. there it's definitely I, there I think that for sure and then of course I think the other thing is the drama you know I am 100% a drama queen so I go for the dramatic music yeah, you and the epic yeah. and the big ending that's all kind yeah. of I think that's based on opera too. You know, you 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 start. You know, the big tenors opera always starts off. You know, and then you know what's building to that high C or high B flat. <laughs> you know what's coming. That yeah. that was very much in the uh, in the visitor. You know, the the, the song that I sent you the demo to that one pretty early yeah. on, and I was excited to have that 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 held higher note there. That was a big, I think. Uh, that that was very much an operatic tenor note, you know. <laughs> it's a big moment in the, in the song, and now I I never listen the same. Again, I'll I'll go back and um, and now I listen with a with a different ear now that I I know that 
So are you? So you're still recording your vocals the same way same that way? you all did. I mean, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I still, That's I still record my vocals into a standard iPhone. Yes. Headset <clears throat> into the iPhone, <clears throat> and then I send it um, to James, and he yeah. takes it from there. But he can't believe it either. He's like, I can not believe. Mm -mm. That, that this is what you're doing you know i think and any engineer would just like die if they knew that that's that's the case but... oh yeah you'd have to redo it all but there's something about it that technique that really works well for your voice there's something i don't know i i, yeah. I just i can't figure out why that is but for somehow it, it really does work you yeah. know somehow that combination man yeah lucky you'll never have to get yeah. a real microphone you'll save a lot of money that way yeah yeah. <laughs> you won't have to because it sounds phenomenal it just it still blows me away to this day i'll never forget when you revealed your big secret i just <laughs> yeah. i'll never forget that i'm still just as blown away <laughs> it's amazing it's amazing to me yeah yeah i don't know i guess uh, yeah as you said necessity is the mother of invention oh yes oh yeah that's right and thank thank god for that too yeah. thankfully you know re having restrictions uh, like that, you know, uh, logical, uh, uh, not logical, but uh, um, uh, restrictions in the logistics mm. of, you know, of like, that's a great thing if you let it yeah. be. Yeah, I mean, that's what that, that I mean, that too, that's where that's it sounds like that's what the crying tree came out of, too. You have new parameters. You're, yeah. you know, you're by yourself. And so that's let's right. see what we can do here, you know, which I'm so happy that you're doing is because otherwise... I think it's empowering for you too, because otherwise you're kind of waiting around for Billy to not be doing some Grammy award winning project or something. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. He's so busy and I just wanted to keep things moving and put things out that are really close to my heart right now at the moment, yeah. you know, in real time and go ahead and put the, and say some things that I feel need to be said. And, uh, and so, and it's helping with my own production skills and it's helping me up my own game and my demos need to be better and everything I do here needs to be better. So it's helping me do that. And I get yeah. to say some things and there's things laying on my heart that I feel need to be put out there. And it's just enabled me to do that. And so, yeah, it's a positive in every way. And, yeah. and just to, well, keep the, to keep the ball rolling. If yeah. Nothing well, I else. think it sounds top notch, man. I think it sounds great. And, Thank um, you. I hope you Thanks. will keep doing it, man, because uh, I love I love these, uh, you know, smaller songs yeah. you know, that you're doing by yourself. I fucking love them, man. They're my they're my they're my favorite ones. Thank you. Really. Thank you so much. And, man. And I, I think this one is my. Wow. Well, it's hard to say because it's between this and the ghost. But I. Ah, it's hard to pick. It's like picking your children. You know, which one do you love the most? Yeah. Uh, this one and the ghosts are my favorite for sure. I don't know if I can pick between those two, but I really love this one, man. This is gorgeous. Thank, gorgeous. thank you. I'm really proud of it. I'm proud of the different direction. I'm proud of the the lyrical content. Yeah. Everything that I decided to do on it. I, I appreciate that that you love it so much because I love it. I love it just as much. I, and I'm proud of it. Yeah. I'm proud of this song. Well, thank you mu so much for being the last guest the first guest on the show and the last guest of 2023 happy holidays happy you. Holidays. and it's going to be new year's eve before you know it and you're taking a little break and then you're going to get back in it after the first of the year yeah i mean well i have another single new single coming out uh january 12th so oh you do yeah did i know that what's what's the name of that song i don't think so this is this is one that just uh, flew out of me. This is yeah. called "True Love Awaits." Oh, uh, a, cl a classic uh, Scott Baker Graham title. Yeah, song yeah, title. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a pulverized heart bleeding on your sleeve, little ditty, you know. Oh yeah, that has to be emotional and dramatic, <laughs> cinematic, and oh yes, that's all we know. That, well, that's that's all we know. It's what we do. <laughs> And builds to an operatic conclusion. Yes, that's <laughs> right. That's right. That's all coming together to make a beautiful uh, cake. Jesus, Yummy and tasty. We've almost been doing this for an hour. What the, time flies, man. Oh. I just love talking that's, to you, my brother. 
Wow. Yeah, I miss you. I miss you, man. Uh, I miss you we too. Gotta, so... We, we got to talk more, you know, even if we're not hitting record, you know. Yeah. I, yeah. I like you. Well, I'll, and I'll be more, I'll be more active now that I've moved out of my, uh, the dark ages and coming back yeah. into the light a little bit. I yeah. feel more motivated to interact with everyone now and I'm moving out of it. I'm wearing, uh, I'm wearing bright, fluffy uh, bathrobes oh, and good. bringing back into my life a little bit. So, uh, yes. Creeping, so, back, creeping out of the shadows. Creeping out. Life. So yeah, I will be more present uh next year. And yeah, 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 we'll hook up more and uh yeah, hang out. Definitely. All right, man. Well, correct congratulations on this release, the return of Tokyo Teens. I love it. Yeah. Thank you so much, Scott. I enjoyed this today. And I'll talk Thank to you soon, man. Love you. Later. Love you, bro.